Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there is a ton of news stories to get into today. So let's talk about the world of AEW All Elite Wrestling. And obviously this week when we talk about AEW, we're going to have to talk about CM Punk. Because he's the guy. He's the guy this week. It's, it's The time is nearly here. The... The speculation, the rumors can end because CM Punk this coming Friday <clears throat> is rep reported to be making his debut with All Elite Wrestling. AEW Rampage, the first dance, the United Center sold out in a case of minutes, just on, just on a rumor. <laughs> Nothing's been confirmed, just on a rumor. Just on some speculation that CM Punk would soon be all elite. It's that big a story and it's going to be that big a week for AEW, for CM Punk. And CM Punk, he's been very stum when asked about this. When asked about him becoming all elite, he said, well, you know, I might be busy. Well, that Friday, well, Friday, Friday 20th when he was doing his pretend look at his calendar, piece of paper like this. Oh, Friday, the Friday. Oh, I'll check my calendar. It was blank as this piece of paper. I'll, I'll have to check. I might be doing a, a, a premiere of stars that night, or heels rather, on stars that night. So I don't know. He's going to be there Friday. CM Punk has continued to tease that he will soon be all elite. CM Punk took to his Instagram yesterday afternoon and continued to fuel the rumors and speculation regarding his professional wrestling status. As you can see on the screen right there, Punk posted a new Instagram story with just three letters listed 05, 11, and 21. Now, Punk did not explain what those numbers mean, but fans, of course, are speculating as to what they could mean. Have you deciphered the code? Have you cracked the code? Now, some fans are speculating these numbers could be the years that he signed major wrestling contracts in. Punk originally signed his WWE developmental contract in 2005. Then, of course, he signed his much-talked-about contract in the summer of 2011 with WWE, which was used in the storylines. Could 21 be a reference to Punk signing with AEW or, indeed, WWE also in this year? I think, myself personally, he is not referring to contracts. I think he's referring to Summer of Punk's. Because 2005, of course, he did sign his developmental contract with WWE. But 2005 was the summer of punk in Ring of Honor. When he was ROH champion. When they thought he was going to be leaving the company. He ended up wearing the, winning the ROH World Championship. Ended up signing his WWE developmental contract on the Ring of Honor Championship. 2011, of course, was the next summer of punk. When his contract legitimately was about to expire with WWE. But he signed his contract in the Rosemont Horizon backstage at Money in the Bank. Later that night, he goes like 30 or 40 minutes wrestling John Cena. Wins the WWE Championship. Blows a kiss to Vince McMahon. Goodbye. And he leaves through the crowd. That was that summer of punk that WWE just mismanaged and brutally, brutally got wrong. Considering he was gone for, what, two weeks, three weeks? They held a tournament. Rey Mysterio won. Lost it in the same night to John Cena. Then you have the title versus title undisputed champion match at SummerSlam that year, which CM Punk won. But then he gets stuck by Kevin Nash and a jackknife powerbomb. And Alberto Del Rio then cashes in on CM Punk. Wins the WWE Championship. The following month, he was meant to wrestle Kevin Nash. Nash couldn't because he had some issues with the blood thinning medication that he was on. So it took a while for him to get off of that medication. So instead, you had CM Punk versus Triple H. And wouldn't you know it, the most popular and over character in the company. Someone that actually had mainstream entertainment and sporting websites talking about the company. What do they do? Of course, make him lose to Triple H. Get that guy over, pal. That's what happened there. That's what WWE does in terms of managing stuff that's getting over. So I think that's what he's referring to in that in that post. I think he's referring to the Summer of Punk in Ring of Honor, the Summer of Punk in WWE, and the upcoming Summer of Punk in AEW. Now, of course, it is August. It'll be a bit of a late summer of Punk. Nevertheless, it's a Summer of Punk uh, that's going to happen, and it's going to begin Friday on AEW Rampage, which, of course, will be live uh, in a post-show afterwards. Uh, I don't know. I was thinking of doing a watch-along for Rampage. I don't know if I should... It just usually, of course, I wouldn't, but it feels like such a big deal, doesn't it, Friday? And it's only an hour, so I think I probably will do it. I'm conscious that it's going to be a really busy week this week, of course. Obviously, there's wrestling on every single day, um, considering, of course, some of the big events. But it would mean a watch along a post show Friday for Rampage. It would mean a watch along a post show Saturday for SummerSlam. And then it would mean a watch along and post show for NXT TakeOver 36 on Sunday. 
Also Sunday, if you're a football fan, I'm doing every single match reaction for Manchester United games this season on United View 2. So I'm going to be a busy boy over the course of the next few days. But look, that's that's the life that we live in right now. That's the exciting thing. I love what I do. And um, it's an exciting week. So I think I probably will do a post show. Watch along. I think I've kind of convinced myself whilst I've been recording here. I think I'll do it. I think I'll do it. If you want me to do it, you can let me know in the comment section below. Speaking of Rampage, we have the viewership figures for the first episode of Rampage. Of course, the premiere episode of Rampage was last Friday. And Friday's AEW Rampage premiere drew 740,000 live viewers on TNT. This is according to Nielsen via Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics. The one-hour Rampage premiere drew a 0.30 rating in the 18-49 to 49 key demographic. Rampage was ranked number three for the night on cable in the top 150 behind the NFL preseason games on the NFL Network, according to Showbuzz Daily, which is back, by the way. Great to see Showbuzz Daily back. Now everyone can actually get their ratings once again from Showbuzz Daily, so that's a lot of fun. Now, some people will look at this and some people will say, well, in, you know, in reality, 740,000, is that very good? AEW's doing, Dynamite's doing nearly over a million viewers. Well, they are doing over a million viewers every Wednesday night. 740,000. Is that not good? Is that not good? Well, in reality, to compare to the first Friday Night Dynamite episode of 2021 that aired on May 28th, that drew 526,000 live viewers with a 0.20 key demo rating. On June 4th, that turned into 462,000 viewers with a 0.19 key demo rating. On June 11, that turned into 487,000 viewers with a 0.19 rating too. And on June 18, that turned into a 552,000 live viewers on TNT with a 0.20 key demo rating. So in reality, in reality, uh, 740,000 viewers on a Friday at 10 p.m. is not bad at all. If anything, it's quite good. And the uh, 0.3 rating they'll be happy with, considering on the other Friday shows they were doing this year, they were doing 0.2s, 0.19. So it's a significantly up from these Friday Night Dynamite shows that they were doing. So they're going to be very happy about that. In reality, though, it's a premiere episode. You would expect that a premiere, a first, an opening, does well. The opening premiere episode of Dynamite did, what, 1.4 million viewers? So a premiere episode, a debut episode, always does very well. If anything, usually it's only downhill from there because since the premiere debut episode of Dynamite, they've never reached 1.4 million viewers again. So you would suspect in reality, if the premiere episode draws 740, I would suspect they're going to probably level out to that 500 mark, that 500,000 viewers every Friday night. And look, that's not bad. In the grand scheme of things, that's not bad. I know a lot of people will say, oh, AEW in the mud, AEW in the red, AEW's terrible, AEW's all this, AEW's all that, all that kind of stuff. Look, AEW can say those, uh, the, the people that don't like AEW rather can say those things. In reality, we know the time slot. Friday's a notoriously difficult night for any television, especially in a world where people are, are going out more. I know obviously cases are on the rise in the United States, but people are going out more. Restrictions certainly are being lifted in, in certain areas. And people have plans, especially at 10 p.m. It's one thing to have a Friday night smackdown. Um, from 8 to 10, uh, which is prime time, of course, but from 8 to 10, that's one thing. But at 10 p.m., people, if they've got plans, they're in the middle of them right then at that point. Uh, 10 p.m. is a difficult time, but I don't, I don't think anyone realistically, if you're expecting Rampage to be doing over a million viewers regularly, it's just not going to happen. I mean, I, I, I don't know what it will take to draw a million viewers. Maybe it will take a CM Punk. Maybe it will take CM Punk making his return to Pro Wrestling Friday night. Maybe that will be enough to get a million. We'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. It was enough to sell out the United Center. That's worth pointing out. But in terms of enough to crack a million, that'll be tough. That'll be interesting. I mean, Friday's a great example or a great case study, if you will, of the drawing power of CM Punk. Is he enough to get an AEW Rampage show in a really difficult time slot? Over a million viewers. If he is, then AEW know they're in the money there. That's that's the situation. So that's very exciting. That's very exciting. Uh, speaking of, though, the Rampage T, uh, ratings on TNT, TNT themselves are very happy about this. They released a press release yesterday to tout the rating success of Friday's AEW Rampage premiere. 
um, AW president, CEO, general manager, head of creative, all of those <laughs> titles that Tony Khan has commented on the Rampage Premier ratings. He said, quote, our goal was to come out of the gate strong and establish Fridays at 10 p.m. Eastern on TNT as the place to catch the hottest wrestling commodities, uh, the hottest commodities rather in professional wrestling. Coming off our red hot debut of AW Rampage last Friday that featured Dr. Britt Baker retaining her AW Women's World Championship against Red Velvet in the main event. We're excited for the first dance this Friday at the sold out United Center in Chicago. It'll be a special episode of AW Rampage that will be enshrined in wrestling history as a night that fans will remember for a long time. He's again, what's a bit again, without saying CM Punk's name, without saying CM Punk, without saying Phil Brooks, he is saying tune in Friday because CM Punk is going to be there. So that's 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 the point. Now, as I mentioned, TNT released a press release talking up about the strong ratings of Rampage. If they can get 700,000 every single week on a Friday, they'll be more, more than happy with that. Personally, I don't think they will. I think this Friday will be strong again with Punk. I wouldn't be surprised. You would hope if you're AEW, irrespective of, of last week being the, the premiere episode, you would hope that this week's edition of Rampage should outdraw last week's in terms of buzz and interest. Whether or not it will, again, this I mentioned it before, this coming Friday is going to be a great case study to see, look, can CM Punk, can, can he still draw? Can he still draw? That's going to be the that's going to be the really interesting factor in it all. So I'm excited to to see that. Of course, this Wednesday as well we have Dynamite, and Dynamite this week features a really historic moment because AEW and TNT have issued a press release not just about Rampage last night, but also to tout Sting's first ever match on Dynamite. Now, as noted, Wednesday's AEW Dynamite on TNT from Houston, Texas will feature Sting and Darby Allen versus 2.0 in a Texas Tornado Tag Team match. This, of course, will be Sting's first match on TNT in 20 years since March of 2001 on the final episode of WCW Monday Nitro, where he wrestled Ric Flair in the main event and the last ever WCW match on TNT. Now, AEW pointed to how Sting last wrestled, as I mentioned, during the final WCW Monday Nitro episode on March 26, 2001. They touted how Allen and Sting have a perfect 2-0 record for their AEW Revolution victory over Brian Cage and current FTW champion Ricky Starks in that cinematic street fight, and then over Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky at Double or Nothing. Now, Sting has commented on his relationship with TNT and the chance to wrestle on Wednesday's show is surreal. He said, quote, my relationship with TNT goes back more than 25 years. So having the opportunity to wrestle on the network that house some of my most important moments is pretty surreal. The return of crowds has already been electric enough over the past month and a half, but there's going to be an extra surge of adrenaline in Houston knowing that we're live on TNT on Wednesday night. Now, Tony Khan said, quote, when we first launched AEW, I was ecstatic to bring professional wrestling back to TNT after such a long absence. So many wrestling fans, myself included, watched Sting defeat the legendary Ric Flair 20 years ago in that last match on TNT. And now it's such a thrill that Sting will finally return to the ring on Wednesday Night Dynamite to team with Darby Allin against 2.0 in a Texas Tornado tag team match. This historic match on Wednesday in Houston is just another example of AEW's commitment to bring wrestling fans the great moment they deserve I would assume and I don't know actually I was going to say I would assume this will main event but you also have the Jericho MJF match which probably should be the main event unless they don't want to air the show on, they, they want to stop the show on a, on a downer it's either look one of those matches either Sting and Darby open the show or they main event it and and Jericho and MJF will fill that other void I would probably actually say that Jericho and and MJF probably main event probably but, I mean, what a spot for 2.0, to be honest with you. Like, Darby Allen and Sting, look, I was critical of, of of Sting wrestling. I had no issue with Sting coming into to AEW or TNT. I, like many people, was concerned about Sting. I still have those concerns. They haven't changed really anything that, irrespective of his injuries, if Sting was totally healthy and he didn't have what happened to him with Seth Rollins all those years ago at Night of Champions, I would still be concerned because someone wrestling in their 60s is just... Dangerous. It's dangerous. Let alone the last time he wrestled prior to coming into AEW, the guy was nearly paralyzed. He couldn't walk. He couldn't feel his legs and arms. That's a problem. And for somehow, some way, he's been doing the training. And I would assume he's been working with the doctors. And he thought he was going to be doing cinematic matches. And the cinematic match was incredibly grueling. He said, if anything, it was worse than a usual match. I think that's something people have started to realize. The Undertaker said that himself as well. I remember The Undertaker doing an interview with... 
I can't remember who it was. It was right after he faced AJ Styles. It might have been that, like, the thin line thing. He's got some some uh, T-shirts that he always wears, some apparel that he wears. And he did an interview with them on, um, it was an Instagram Live thing. And he was doing an interview, and he basically said, look, a lot of people think cinematic matches are, like, you know, it's acting. It's like stunt work. You don't really get hurt. He was like, if anything, it's even worse because it's a 12-hour shoot. You take your bump, and then you stop. You take a bump, and then you stop. And you do the bump again, and you do the bump again, and you do the bump again, and then you stop, and you stop, and you stop. When you wrestle a match at WrestleMania in front of a crowd, I do it for 25 minutes. I don't feel a thing because of the crowd and the adrenaline. I get backstage, and then I'm in a lot of pain. When it's on a cold set, nobody's there. And I have to do it for 12 hours. That's way harder. <laughs> That's way harder. And I think Sting kind of figured out the same thing when he did the Street Fighter Revolution that, you know what, actually, because I think they, they filmed it across two days and they were on set for like 12 hours each day. Like he said, it was brutal. And then he did the match at Double or Nothing and he did his spots. He didn't take a ton of bumps. They were very measured and calculated. And I think you kind of realize, actually, maybe this is the better way to do it. Maybe we're just far more calculated because what he did at Double or Nothing, that match then was, what, 15 minutes? And maybe he took, I don't know, like three or four bumps, if that. At the, the Revolution uh, Street Fight, he was on set for nearly 24 hours and probably took a ton of bumps. And he thought, actually, you know what? This is a lot more difficult. Maybe it's best for me just to do a regular match and let's smoke a mirror zip. So it's going to be interesting to see Sting on Dynamite. Again, I still have my reservations with, with Sting working. I think he definitely does add something to the show. I prefer this use of Sting than Sting coming out, doing an interview every week. We're going to hear from Sting this week. How many times did we hear that? We don't need to hear from Sting every week. You can come out, just be there with Darby Allen, get the other guy over. What they did on Rampage Friday was perfect. Have him up in the rafters. That's what they did with WCW all those years. That's no problem at all. So I liked that. And 2.0, look, the former Ever, Ever Rise from NXT and... I said whenever Rise were released by WWE, I could see them in AEW because I can just see, I could see them on being the elite. That's why I said I can absolutely see them in AEW because they, they just fit. They fit the humor. They fit the mentality of AEW. And they come in and they're having matches with Sting. <laughs> Their first feud is with Sting. That That is crazy to me. That's absolutely crazy. And it's awesome. They're a super, super entertaining tag team. And I think it's a case also of AEW, like, Proving to WWE, you're going to release these guys. We're putting them in there with one of our hottest up-and-coming talents. The talent that's going to be wrestling CM Punk soon, by the way, and Darby Allin. And an icon like Sting. Not only do we trust them, but they are the perfect They are the perfect foil guys. At 2.0, I'm going to be winning many matches. They're the guys that just get beat up all the time. But they look great doing it. And um, I'm interested to see what what happens. Look, this is, this is an interesting thing that's booked for Wednesday night. It certainly is. Max Caster. He's been a name people have been talking about a lot recently. Of course, there's been the controversy about his rap on AEW Dark. Now, despite the episode being taped six days prior and despite people obviously watching it back, they decided not to edit out his rap. They missed these controversial lyrics, allowed it to air. The promotion later re-uploaded the episode, edited Max Caster's entrance out. Uh, and subsequently, Max Caster, the debate about what's going on with a him and AEW continues. The acclaim were removed from the AEW tag team rankings. And Caster appears to be hinting at possibly leaving AEW with a series of eyebrow-raising actions on social media as of late. Now, he's unfollowed most AEW wrestlers and removed any mention of the company from his bio. An eBay account, most likely Caster's, put up Max Caster's ring-worn gear for sale, claiming it wasn't needed anymore. This is what the posting has to say, quote, This set of gear has been worn on AEW Dynamite. I've worn this in matches against Chris Jericho, MJF, uh, the Young Bucks, John Moxley, SCU, and more. Need some extra dollars this month, and I don't think I'll be needing this stuff anymore, dot, dot, dot. Get it off my hands. We'll personalize an autograph on the knee pads at request. Perfect collector's items for AEW fans. Thanks. Now, Tony Khan, of course, had to publicly apologize for Max Caster's rap. Reportedly, he is undergoing sensitivity training. It's up in the air whether or not he's been suspended. There have been conflicting reports about that. Fightful Select reported that his appearances with AEW were on hold or on ice for now. It's certainly curious. It's certainly curious. Look, I think he's probably got a right to feel a bit frustrated about the whole situation. Look, I mentioned, I've spoken about this at length here on the channel, so I don't really want to go over it too much again, but... The situation with Max Caster is what he said and did was ultimately wrong. Um, you know, he said some things that were insensitive and I thought were over the line and didn't need to be said and it was cheap heat. 
but it's not just his fault. If he went up to someone, and this is where I think he has a right to feel aggrieved, if he went up to someone and said, look, this is what I'm going to say tonight, and they went, yeah, fine, and then he said it, he shouldn't be the one to get in trouble there. Now, obviously, he came up with it and he said it. Maybe he should be punished, but there are other people in the company that are responsible. They didn't edit it off the program. They told him it was all right. That doesn't necessarily seem to be fair, and maybe that's where this whole thing lies from. Maybe it's a case of him kind of standing his ground and going, no, I'm a heel, I got heat. And I didn't think what I did was wrong. And even though maybe I did step over the line, it was approved. And why am I getting punished for something that was approved? You didn't back me in this situation. I could understand him feeling aggrieved by that. Genuinely, I can. So I hope it doesn't mean the end of Max Caster in AEW. Um, he mentioned that he was suspended without... There was a report that he was suspended without pay, without pay. He didn't mention that himself. Maybe this is the case of him trying to make that extra money. I don't know. I don't know. It's a very weird situation right now of Max Caster and AEW, and uh, I'm sure we'll find out more. And uh, I hope it's not the end because he had a ton of potential in AEW. He really did. Finally, Kenny Omega dropped a bit of a reference to Daniel Bryan this past week in Being the Elite. Now, Being the Elite has been the Young Bucks vlog for years, and this week saw the Bucks and Kenny Omega disregard former WWE superstar Daniel Bryan, of course, he's rumored to have signed of AEW, on a trip to Walmart. Now, the Jackson brothers and Kenny Omega picked up a collectible action figure set containing Daniel Bryan and the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Omega acknowledged the Fiend and claimed he didn't know who the other guy was. Now, the best bout machine proceeded to pick up his own action figure and placed it in front of the Fiend and Bryan's. In another part of the vlog, Kenny Omega addressed the claims that AEW is mainly filled with WWE guys in a profanity-laden message. He said, quote, 75% of this MFing roster is from WWE. You know what that automatically means? That they failed at a real sport. They failed there and they failed at a sport of their choice. Now we'll show these pieces of SH, you know the rest, how we roll. So some people are saying, ah, this is a tease that Daniel Bryan's coming to AEW. In the same vein that uh, CM Punk is definitely coming to AEW, I think at this point, Bryan Danielson is coming to AEW. Nobody, 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 nobody has disputed those reports. Nobody has said, no, that's not true. That's not happening, which leads you to believe it's happening. So in the same vein that CM Punk's going to be all elite, Bryan Danielson is, is as well in the near future. But look, guys, as always, this is just one man's opinion. What are your thoughts on all these AEW news stories we've spoken about today? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about AEW, WWE, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go to the rankings and get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video, along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.